start off with one. Alrighty. Abdi? Here. Here. I'm here. Emma? Here. Jack? Here. Noah? Here. Peter? Present. Jenna? Here. Crystal? Here. Bree? Here. Elias? No, Elias. Okay. Willie? Here. And Bennett, are you here? All right. Jasmine? Here. Nicholas? Grace? No, Grace. Natalie? Here. Payton? Here. Suzanne? Here. Lucas? Here. Andy? Here. Olivia? Here. Kyrie? Here. Bridget? Here. Kristen? Here. Tyler? No, Tyler. India? Here. Payne? No pain. Okay. Emily? Here. Okay, thank you. Um uh precious, I got you. And we'll update you on the agenda as well. Okay. Is there an approval of last week's minutes? Motion to approve last week's minutes. Second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. No guest speaker tonight. Is there any constituent comments? If there is, you could just put an asterisk on the chat box. Alrighty. Transitioning to cabinet reports, Chief of Staff, Emma. Hey everyone. Um, I don't have a lot new to report because it's been a crazy hectic couple of weeks for me. So thank you for being so patient. I hope all of you are doing well. Um, I believe the line literally says vote, I beg of you. Uh, voting closes tomorrow at five. Uh, last I looked at the turnout, we have I think over 300 people who voted. That is awesome, please keep it up. Turnout is important and this election unfortunately can't last forever. Voting will close at some point. So please vote. Um, if you have any issues opening the form, let me know. But in general, Google Forms aren't very mobile friendly. So just use like a computer, um, not a mobile device. That'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, thank you, Emma. Attorney General, Jack. Uh, yeah, so before I get into anything election-wise, I actually have a handful of clubs um, that are in attendance tonight. Um, let me see. Is there anyone from ages here? Um, I know I've spoken with Ollie. Ollie, there you are. Perfect timing. Ollie, do you um, – so you guys had your first week of approval, not this past week. Um, but the previous week, do you just want to hop on and remind everyone um, what AGES is all about real quick? Hi, um, I'm Ali. Um, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm one of the co-presidents of AGES. Um, AGES stands for the All Gender Equity Society, and 
our goal is to create a community where trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming individuals and allies, allies on campus can kind of have like a safe space to not only uh, work together and educate the community on topics and work together to make a space that's more comfortable, but also just have a community and a support system of uh, like-minded people and people who have had similar experiences. Yeah, so I emphasized two weeks ago um, how important I think this group is um, and how fantastic all of their documentation was. Um, so I think ages, um, should they be approved this evening, um, would be a great addition um, to Allegheny College. Motion to make ages a club. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? All righty, that passes. Ollie, I apologize. We should have had you leave for that vote, but um, congratulations. Um, ages is uh, now going to be recognized. Um, so you don't have to hang around. Um, you're more than welcome to, but uh, thanks for coming out. Um, moving down the line next, um, I have um, Sean here uh, from the Billiards Club. Um, they had, after I had jumped out last week, um, received their first week of approval as well. Um, Sean, you want to just remind everyone what the Billiards Club is all about uh, before you go for your second week of voting? Can everyone hear me? Because last week I had trouble. Can, can everyone hear me? All right. We could hear you. All right, perfect. Uh, so first off, um, there's we've found that the students have demonstrated uh, significant interest in the pool club. A lot of people I've been talking to, but uh, we right currently we have a pool league started and it's the largest it's ever been. The biggest problem we're facing is access to pool tables. We only have access to one pool table. So kind of one of our goals is to expand and get another pool table or even two other pool tables that we can play on because we're not able to play as many games as we want to because we have to spread out over so many people. But uh, and we also want to bring new people into the sport, but it's kind of hard because the table is always reserved for the current people that are playing. So that's one of our really our main goals is to do that and eventually maybe uh, start like a, a team here and compete. I know there's local leagues in Meadville that have competitions, we could maybe even compete in that or any other schools in the area that would be willing to do so. Motion to make the Billards Club into a club. Second. Second. Sean, can you hop out of the meeting real quick? Thank you. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Already that passes. Um, so moving down the line once more, um, we have Noor here tonight um, from the chess club. Um, Noor has been a very active um, president and he has reached out to me multiple times. Um, I really appreciate all of his hard work with their constitution. We went back and forth with it um, a few times. Um, so Nor's here tonight. Nor, do you just want to give them a rundown? This will be um, their first week of voting. Um, Nor, do you just want to give a rundown? Uh, hello, thank you, Jack, uh, for working closely on our constitution and everything. So this would be our first week of approvals for the chess club. Uh, we plan on making a chess club to um, help new students who are interested in chess learn about chess and also offer a place for uh, students that already know how to play chess to kind of compete and work together and learn in, in the game. Uh, we already did a petition that we gathered now about 60 votes. So there is a large interest on campus in chess and seeing a chess club. We plan on organizing, uh, like could be tournaments or just uh, general meetings online or in person if that allows. So we, I hope to get a, your approval uh, for a chess club and thank you. Motion to make chess club into a club. Second. Second. Nor, can you hop out of the meeting real quick? Thank you. 
All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. And then I have one more. Uh, thank you guys for bearing with me so far. Um, Nor is an awesome dude. Um, Jacob with the esports team. So this, um, the esports club, um, to my knowledge, prior to my arrival as attorney general this uh, semester, um, had received um, a week of approval under NOAA as proxy. Um, so NOAA kind of passed that over to me um, this past week. Jacob, do you just want to, as everyone else has done tonight, just remind everyone um, what the esports team um, aims to do, what some of their goals are? Yeah, of course. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, so the goal of this club is to kind of organize uh, the people on campus who want to compete um, for Allegheny uh, in esports. It's kind of like this up and coming thing. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but it's just playing video games at a competitive level. Um, and it's becoming a really big thing. A lot of schools and uh, even like some cities and, and countries have esports teams and, and it's really kind of brand new. And we've had a lot of support from students and, and even some professors have reached out to me. Uh, so, but yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, um, looking over their paperwork, um, this seems like a great opportunity um, to really diversify um, Allegheny's clubs. Um, this is something that most colleges at this point um, have. And I was actually kind of surprised here that Allegheny um, doesn't yet. So kudos to Jacob for um, kind of being um, the, uh, pioneer for that. Motion to make esports into a club. Second. Jacob, can you hop out real quick? Thank you. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. All right, guys, thank you for that. Um, it just kind of happened to be that uh, they all fell on the same week based off of contacts um, with them. So I appreciate that. Uh, moving to what has really been the brunt of what's been on my plate lately, um, elections. Um, thank you guys so much for last weekend with the debate. Um, Senate really did a ton when it came to submitting questions um, and being active participants um, during uh, the debate itself. It was great seeing so many names pop in that were familiar within ASG. Um, you guys really made that happen. So props to Senate for that. Um, as Emma said, voting began yesterday morning um, with the hiccups that we had with WebAdvisor. Um, we kind of called an audible at the last minute and went with this Google form um, combined with an email. Um, and it has actually paid great dividends so far. Um, voter turnout, um, in the first day was very impressive. Um, right now, as Emma said, uh, she said just over 300. I believe the exact number is around 332, um, which is good. Um, we're gonna look to, within the next 24 hours, Emma and I are gonna try and get some video out with the two of us. Um, just kind of vote, in, uh, encouraging voter participation again. Um, we think that's, incredibly important, especially in this um, election where both parties um, have worked so hard. Um, I just ask upon Senate, um, over the next 24 hours, you guys are constituents too. Um, so as long as your social medias don't actively um, establish yourselves as senators and use your platform as senators to encourage to vote for someone else, or encourage a vote for someone, you guys can absolutely um, show your support and um, encourage voting among the uh, student population. Um, you guys uh, have been great about that so far. You guys have followed all the guidelines, so I thank you guys for that. Um, I aim to probably have the results. I wanna be very thorough with how we confirm them. Um, we do have the ability to check each singular vote, make sure it came from an Allegheny email. That's how I'll probably spend Thursday evening. Um, so expect a, uh, an announcement in some shape or form that Emma and I have yet to determine um, by Friday morning, Friday afternoon-ish. But um, other than that, that's all I have. If you have any questions for me, 
um, feel free to jump in the chat and I'd be more than happy to. Any questions or comments? I just have a point of order real quick. When uh, we have to vote on something, Patty has to bring it to a motion, ask for a motion first. So let's keep that in mind, thanks. Thank you, Lucas. Anything else? Okay, on to communications and press brief. Hey guys, sorry, I'm cooking. Um, but just a couple things from me. The t-shirts have arrived uh, today. So you guys, uh, we're working on plans to give those out and ways that we're gonna do it. Um, so you'll learn more about that coming up soon. We also have to get the tie-dye so that you guys can tie-dye your t-shirts as well as your mask. So we'll have that. Custom Ink called me yesterday, told me that uh, our mask should be done in about a week, maybe two, depending on delivery. Um, other than that, final changes for the website should be completely done by Wednesday. So all changes should be up uh, by next Wednesday. And then I've been working on a couple things with uh, some of our clubs. So I'm doing promo for our radio station, WARC 90.3. And then I'm working with Mocha on creating just kind of promotional stuff to uh, promote their clubs. And then uh, there is an ACHA collab with ASG and potentially APO uh, for the quarantine students. If you guys haven't seen or haven't had the opportunity to, on the third floor of the campus center in the student life, uh, like the student life suite, there's a ginormous box and it says uh, donations for quarantine students. I talked about this, I think it was like two weeks ago now. It just got put up there, so that's ready. We're going to work on graphics to push that out. And then our Meet a Gator video went up a couple of days ago and then we'll have one for next week as well but if anybody wants to do like a mindful monday video or remote student success vlog just let me know um my email is gravy at allegating.edu and just reach out thank you guys okay thank you brie any questions comments all righty on to director of finance noah good evening everybody um, so the first thing on my plate for this evening is the finance requests. We've had four for this week. Uh, the first is from Why Not Us. They're going to have a virtual screening of a movie. Uh, it would be about $349 from the general budget. And then we have two ASG um, finance requests. The first is for some beehive items. Uh, and Willie, I know that within his, uh, his uh, report this evening is kind of going to hint on that as well. Uh, but that's for $1,000. $1.98.53 coming from the surplus budget. Uh, and then another thing from ASG are June menstrual cups. And I know that's been a big project uh, for Andy. So I'll definitely uh, make sure that she can speak on that later. Uh, and that'll be uh, $1,200 also from the general budget. And then Jade will be getting sweatshirts uh, for $140 also from the general budget. Um, so with that in mind, we need to vote on the, on the finance requests. That's okay, if we could vote on them before I continue. How do you have to make the motion? Approve motive? finance, yeah, I was saying it. Is there a motion to approve the finance requests? Motion to approve this week's finance requests. Second. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. Um, the next and pretty much the last mm -hmm. thing uh, within the finance uh, report are just some final dates for finance requests. The first is that the last day for clubs and organization to submit a t-shirt design is Tuesday, mm -hmm. April the 6th. So that's in a couple weeks here. Um, the last day to put a finance request overall is Monday at April, uh, April tw uh, 12th. Uh, and there's a hard cutoff time at 5 p.m. Um, uh, and then, uh, never mind, not a hard cutoff time at 5 p.m., excuse me. Uh, the final finance committee will be uh, the following Tuesday on the 20th, just to make sure that if anything gets tabled on the, the 13th, that we are able to see it through on the 20th. Uh, and the last day for credit card use is April 30th. Um, and in the coming weeks, um, I, as long with uh, just the other members who need to be present at the budget hearing, will be hashing out some dates. Uh, for the 2021, 2020, 
2022, ooh, that's a tongue twister, uh, school year for um, budget applications and budget hearings and uh, for club budgets. Um, thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay, on to diversity and inclusion, Peter. Hello, so I've had my meeting. <laughs> I had a small meeting slash check-in with April Thompson, I guess on food insecurity. And so she is supposed to send me some data that the school did, but I've yet to receive that. And I've had another meeting related to food insecurity, but that has been rescheduled. Um, I'm gonna go with about twice. So hopefully this week it'll happen. And again, I'm still like working out the possibility of sending up that textbook exchange thing sort of deal in the library. The current, um, well, it's not really a system, but one way of doing it was through Accesses, Access Allegheny's library that they currently have. But when I spoke to Carly, Carly Masarov, she thought that like, you know, it's that, you know, that's just her and maybe one other person. So I try to reach out to the library as a whole and see what we could do moving with, moving forward with that. But that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay. Organizational development, Bennett. Um, so I don't really have much to report. Um, yeah, I, it's just been a long week, you know, um, stay healthy, have a good rest of the week, stay safe. If you need anything from me, just let me know. Thank you, Bennett. Uh, student Affairs, Jenna and Crystal. Hey guys, so um, I'm just working on still the feminine products. I've had some meetings. So I guess basically let me tell you my plan for the rest of the semester. So I have just been meeting with other clubs on campus um, about the machines because I realized like not a bunch of students know that they're available or know where they are. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that and that's been really cool. I have a few meetings this week and I got to meet, this has probably been the biggest school that I've met with, um, UPenn because they, so they slated something in 2019 to, um, begin providing feminine products to their campus and then COVID happened, whatever. So now they're back on track to do that. And... So they did a lot of things to figure that out. And it's just cool to hear like their process, how they approach that, how they develop that. And so that's something that I really think Allegheny can adopt. And I met with um, Temple University, um, their, their school administration since 2018 has not been able to fund the products. And so that's like a flip side, another explanation that I was able to hear. And so my plan is just, um, I had to reschedule my meeting with Gretchen back on Monday. Um, so that's gonna happen on Thursday. So I just wanna talk to her about, you know, what can administration do? What, what does that look like for Allegheny? Um, but yeah, long-term, that's the goal for the machines to be widespread and be, you know, in high trafficked areas and for the college to potentially fund the actual products. So that's what I've been working on. But if you have any questions or want to help me, let me know. Um, yeah, so uh, last week, Jenna and I received an email um, that we got the feminine products. And yesterday, I went to restock all five locations in the campus center, including the all gender restroom. Um, and I replaced a sticker there too because it seemed as if um, it was 
getting a little bit old. But if you need anything, it's there. You can scan if we need to refill it. Um, I will be checking it once a week um, just to make sure that it's constantly filled too. Um, and then today we also had a CLCSE meeting. Um, and I was only there for half of it because I had to go to a class. But basically what was talked about was a little debrief about the academic in integrity cases and the honor code. Um, there was talk about student behavior in the classroom specifically in policies and the process and then student conduct, code of conduct. Um, there were, it was asked if any changes um, were recommended and I know that um, April Thompson is creating like, or not creating, but is having like now a new committee of faculty and students and I participated to be a part of that, so stay tuned. Um, and then I didn't get to hear this little part, but they did discuss the fall, fall move-in planning. Also, if you guys have any questions um, about any of that stuff, we do get minutes. So if you want specifics, um, you can like talk to either one of us individually about that. Any questions, comments? Okay, sustainability and environmental affairs, Billy. What's up? We got through Green Box Week. A huge thank you to everyone that advertised and volunteered. A special shout out to the class of 2024. Um, I think all five of the senators signed up for at least one time slot. Um, I'm told that you talked to Bennett for reporting your hours. If this is wrong, I'm sure someone will stop me shortly. But um, that was what Jack said. So. Um, Basically, if you want to get your service hours in, I think like Kristen and Payne got all of their service hours just with my tabling. So that's one last thing you have to worry about. Um, just a reminder for the note takers and the reporter from the campus newspaper, you can put this in here. Um, I'm still looking for ticket number 816558 to pick up the sustainability care package. Um, they have until Sunday. Um, I'm going to have Yvonne draw a new, um, a new number on Monday. Basically, I wanted to take names down, but I really didn't want to cause a crowd at the table. And I didn't want, you know, to have to wash the pens every single time someone touched it. So I said, let's go with the numbers. And then I didn't think of, you know, people losing their tickets and stuff. So 816-558. Kelly's going to put it on the sustainability page again. Maybe I'll convince Stephanie to put it on the dining page, but you have until Sunday. Um, and then we're drawing a new person on Monday. Um, Noah, so kind, I wrote in my notes, Noah bought me bees. Um, Noah has approved of the final payments for the beehive project. Um, the bees are actually going in very shortly. So the total is $1,198.53. Um, about 219 of that is for Kirsten Ames's and one other person's beekeeping suit. Um, Kirsten, as long as um, Kirsten, par pardon me, um, she is going to be running the beehives as well as the carden. Um, and the 330 of that 1198 is um, the actual bees themselves. And then the rest is for the solar powered fencing. Um, a timetable on the logistics from the bees is um, at minimum, we should be getting honey in the spring of 2022. So that will be up to the next administration to host things. But Kelly and I are putting things in place for whenever we are able to give out honey that um, we're going to have like a big honey celebration with like dining and all this other stuff. But seniors, sorry, juniors, let's hope everyone else you get to enjoy honey. So there's the positives on that. And then um, Kelly will, um, Kelly and I are working on a project to uh, try to move as many water fountains over to the reusable water bottle stations. Um, some numbers that I just found out today is we have 101 total uh, water fountains across the entirety of Allegheny College. Um, 31 of those are water bottle refill stations. Um, four of those are in the process of being conf um, conf uh, contour or conform to water bottle refill stations currently, um, not including the ones that they're going to put in Bentley. And then um, there's one more that exists. It's the one from Baldwin. Um, I think we all kind of know what happened there. But uh, 
basically the way that FizzPlant is kind of attacking this is any time that a station needs refilled or re rather replaced, we're going to put the water bottle refill station in because if we have to replace the whole thing, we're just going to might as well put it in with it. Um, so we're going to get like a list essentially of buildings with the most occupancy and then buildings with the worst quality machines and sort of go from there. Um, Lucas? Is the same person who's doing the card in like while we're on campus, are they going to be also doing it over the summer? I'm assuming because I don't know. Does the Cardin operate over the summer or do they not? Um, Kirsten Ames runs her like position is Cardin manager. She and then student volunteers run uh, who stay on campus over the summer run it during the summer. So she's like full time paid and everything to do the Cardin and then Cardin education. Sophie? Um, just with the water bottle thing in Baldwin, I was in RI there last year. Does that mean they're not ever putting a water bottle refill station in Baldwin? Oh, no, we, we are. We are. Okay. Um, it's just um, in my in my notes that I had put in, um, I was like reading through the list and I wanted to get like an exact number of the ones that are in there. And then like in big bold text, Kelly put vandalized. So um, I just wanted to give you guys like exact numbers and stuff. Yeah, that wasn't a great night. Yeah. Also, no one was ever really held accountable for it. So it is what it is. Yeah. But um, I know, I think I talked a few people, I talked to a few people about wanting to prioritize like um, population, but there's also a chance of us to just replace falling apart water fountains. There's some that are like really bad and are going anyway. So that's where we're sort of, I need to get these numbers to all of you. And then um, Kelly wants to kind of get ASG's feel on that and see like which ones we want to go where. Every academic and at residential building and athletic complex has at least one. So um, there's that. The rest are just extras. But any questions for me about water bottle refills, um, that's next. That'll probably continue until like, the class of 2024 is graduated, but um, we can try to get as many of these as possible. I see Jenna has another dog. This one is not a German Shepherd, but um, yeah, go Steelers. Thank you, Willie. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Alrighty, on to class reports, class of 2021. Hello everyone. I don't really have much to report other than we met with uh, Gretchen Beck um, and we discuss uh, furthermore about senior week. We already have kind of like an outline of what's going to happen. We just have to discuss uh, budgets and just like little details like contacting everybody else to kind of book um, everything for that for those three days. We decided to have a three day uh, senior week. Um, but yeah, other than that, we have nothing else to report. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Class of 2022. Nothing to report. Thank you, Payne. Class of 2023. Hi, so um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about our menstrual cup initiative. So for Women's Month, we decided that we wanted to work with the company June to distribute menstrual cups to the students of Allegheny College. And we got um, 200 in total. There's 130 small, 10 large, and then 60 mini. And we're just kind of working on a way that we can distribute them safely. And yeah, June was actually nice enough to waive the shipping costs, which was awesome. And they were really awesome to work with. So it was pr a pretty great process, honestly. Any questions or comments? I just want to add that uh, I'm thankful for Andy for taking this initiative up and pretty much all the girls in our class, Kyrie, Bridget, and, um, and Liv all took a part of it. And yeah, thank you guys. I kind of just did nothing, so I <laughs> applaud them. <laughs> all righty, on to class of 2024. To add on to that thought, thank you so much, Andy. 
We really appreciate you. The class of 2024 has nothing to report. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Okay, I don't have too much to report either. Abdi, do you have anything? Um, I don't have to report. Uh, I don't have anything to report. I'm hoping to have a lengthy discussion for the new business. I'll be brought up soon. But yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Okay, there's no unfinished business. On to new business. Silk legislation. So that should be Abdi and uh, Noah. Um, good, good evening, everybody. Did everyone see the email that I sent out? Senators and cabinet members, did you all see the email? Uh, follow up question Did you have a chance to look through the legislation? I know it was pretty hefty, it's about 36 pages. Um, and it, it, it might be the only legislative piece that we see this year, but it's a pretty big one. Um, so, does anyone have any questions kind of regarding the bill? Uh, or if Abdi, if you want to jump in, you most certainly can. Any questions about the bill? If not, I can go into kind of a detail on, on how it will function and what's the purpose of it. Um, so in my email, I kind of pointed out that you know, throughout the last couple of years, I've been in, um, a student at Allegheny as well as a member of ASG. I've kind of noticed that the Idea Center um, resides in the uppermost corner of the campus center uh, near the back exit towards North Village. Um, and there's been a historic um, underrepresentation for these groups within our campus. There's 17 organizations on our campus, uh, SOAP organizations on our campus, which are responsible for 100% of the culture that thrives here. Um, and without this, uh, these 17 organizations, uh, we wouldn't have uh, such an abundance of culture as we do. So uh, for the last nine months, uh, this has been a discussion that Abby and Patty, as well as uh, the cabinet and I have been having um, about kind of empowering and kind of offering more resources and an advancement um, to uh, these silk organizations. So for the last, I believe it was five weeks, I've been working with five silk members to uh, compose that constitution. Uh, it is 24 pages and it, uh, what both pieces have been approved by Angelica and Mika from the Idea Center and they played a very active role in kind of bringing this to fruition. Um, and uh, I believe it was January, uh, Ali and I, we uh, met with the Silk uh, presidents at the Silk meeting and kind of brought this as a, uh, um, a point of order to discuss for the coming year. Um, and then we kind of and recently have been putting it together, writing it uh, and making sure that each and every word was not um, done by ASG alone, but it has rather been um, all of us working in tandem. Uh, it's been both an initiative from ASG as well as uh, Silk together and Hobby. Yeah, I also wanted to add before we kind of started, you know, pushing and, um, you know, pushing this legislation and, you know, trying to get in contact with the Silk members. Uh, we kind of wanted to go a different way about it. So we met with Ms. Carmen Ellington. Um, she's the official president of the ABC Alumni Council and uh, it's the only, I think the only active alumni council, like for, for the clubs, uh, for Silk. And, um, you know, she has been working within, um, within Silk and the school for a long time. And she's also on the uh, diversity, equity, uh, and inclusion uh, board of trustees board. Um, so she has a lot of influence and gave us some great tips and was very um, heavy, pretty much favored this idea. And also uh, after that, we kind of wanted to met, uh, meet with uh, Manny Soares, uh, who kind of like, you know, grouped us all together and was able to kind of, you know, create, create a discussion before we come up to the silk organizations um, to see how we can push this forward, the right way to push this forward and see if it, it can be achievable. Um, but yeah, continue, Noah. Just wanted to add that part in. So today I simply wanted to, uh be a discussion and not a voting. I would like to vote next week uh, in the following week. This will have to be a two week voting initiative because this will be in addition to our constitution as well as a pretty large shift in the campus culture. Um, so does anyone have any questions as I, or I would love to go into the bill and kind of break it down uh, piece by piece. I know it might take a little bit, but I think it's fairly important, very, very important on why and what everything is because it is in legalese term, if you will. Uh, Lucas? 
Yeah, yeah real quick, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to um, everyone working on this. I read through it and I was actually just very thoroughly impressed. And it's something we should add. Uh, I really think we should add this to our constitution and it will change a lot on campus too. So yeah, um, thank you for everyone who worked on it and I'm proud of us. So let's go team. Abdi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add um, before you start breaking down the constitution, um, kind of like, you know, the why um, behind this, you know, there are fairly a lot of reasons, you know, but just being uh, within Silk, being a Silk president, uh, kind of my end of uh, my freshman year up to my junior year, um, I kind of knew that there was a gap between uh, the Silk organizations or the multicultural organizations and ASG. And, you know, coming into this position, that's something I kind of wanted to like uh, make better and improve, you know, even after I leave. And, uh, heavily trying to stay away from doing something and it's not sustainable um, throughout, but we believe this resolution will be very sustainable. Um, it's also given an invitation to kind of share power. Um, I think it's like the best form of equality, which I've seen throughout Allegheny. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Lucas, by the way, and everyone also working on it. We noticed simply that um, there's a lot of Band-Aid solutions to a lot of the social problems kind of, um, but there hasn't been anything that is truly cemented in a, a true devotion to resolving these issues. So this is one step in that direction. By no means is this legislation perfect, but it's a seed. It's that's simply what it is. There's a lot of room for amendment, a lot of room for change. And that's what's important is that this is the first step uh, um, in, in getting our organizations to work in tandem for our, our whole community. The purpose of ASG within our constitution uh, pretty much states that our, our job is to crystallize the student opinion and make sure that every student in layman's terms um, feels welcomed to be a student here. And it's imperative that at the forefront of, of that mission is making sure that all students um, are, are comfortable being here. So. As we get into the, the document, if you want to jump on senators and cabinet members, you feel free. Uh, I'm just going to go down kind of through the her uh, hereby statements. So the first statement pretty much says that ASG uh, will be recognizing uh, Silk as a formalized student government um, and that all multicultural organizations will now be under an umbrella of Silk. Um, there are 17 organizations and they all agree unanimously to this as well. Um, the SILK uh, will have an executive board that's comprised of various members. Uh, uh, there will be a president, a vice president, a secretary. Um, oh yes, how do I do that? Can someone enlighten me? My, I'm infantile, literally infantile with technology. So someone needs to spoon feed me how to do this. I'm sorry, how to do what, Noah? Screen share. Uh, oh, Bree, Bree sent me a direct, I'm sorry, Bree. I, again, infantile with technology. So can, can you walk me through this, Bree, as we uh, yeah. in, engage in this? So it should be down at the bottom. It's like a green button that, screen, that says share screen. If you click on it, it should let you. If not, I can make you like a co-host. So let me know if that works as well. Which one? There you Have go. I done it? Have I done it? Can you see the legislation? Yes. You did it, Noah. Oh, <laughs> I started sweating bullets there for like a couple seconds. So as we see, uh, here we are. This is what I'm talking about. Um, so we have, uh, I'm going to, we have two pieces. So we can talk about the resolution and then go into the constitution, which is over here. Um, so the first, as I was saying, there'll be an executive board that's comprised of these members, the president, vice president, and secretary. Uh, and we'll get more into the other parts of the executive board here uh, within the constitution. Um, they have the same impeachment clauses as we do, so a violation of their constitution and a violation of the honor code and failure to uphold their uh, duties and responsibilities. Um, an important factor here is that elections for the executive board will occur prior to the ASG elections, and that's simply because um, if someone wanted to go for uh, president of their organization, of the Silk organizations, they should have the right to do so. Um, and uh, if they weren't to win that, they should still have the ability to engage in uh, the ASG elections. Uh, the president of Silk, uh, an ASG president, will meet biweekly to discuss the status of their organizations. At the forefront of this bill is communication, and it's imperative that the leaders of both organizations are constantly in communication about the status of their organizations, as well as the shared projects that uh, would help benefit both organizations or just the projects overall. 
um, and that the executive board of Silk will meet with the Silk advisor, which is Angelica, uh, and she's phenomenal. Uh, and she, she really was happy to see that. And another important factor here is that the executive board of Silk will meet with the ASG cabinet because um, beyond just the president and vice president of, of both organizations, there's a lot that happens outside of, uh, uh, outside of those two executive offices. So those, our cabinets will meet uh, monthly just to talk about our shared projects as well as things to help greater the good for all students. And uh, uh, the next set is pretty much that uh, prior to the ASG budget hearings, they'll submit, the executive board will submit a list of all the organizations that will be recognized under SILK um, with a slight vary, uh, with an estimate of the students who will be a uh, number for participation. Um, a lot of the SILK organizations, even though that they'll be residing under SILK, they won't um, necessarily, they'll still be uh, uh, their own entity. So um, they'll have the ability to host uh, events in their own names. They'll have the right to collaborate with any and every organization. They'll have the, they'll be able to still receive ideas uh, funding. They'll just have to disclose that they already do. Um, and that's within the financial guidelines. Uh, and then the treasurer will have a master list of this idea center funding. Uh, clubs that will retain their budget. Um, the executives of each organization will still retain that. Uh, you can probably read through here. This is more structure function things. Um, so, um, and then this is uh, the FACC. This is what section five is. This is kind of a hefty deal here. Uh, is that SOAK will receive an annual allocation of funding for hosting events for uh, inclusion and diversity and culture. Um, it'll be recognized as the FACC and it will be added to our constitution as well as the financial guidelines. Uh, it's called the Fund for the Advancement and Celebration of Culture. Um, uh, and, that, and within that, uh, it's imperative that we, we notice the phrase no less. Um, so SOAK will receive no less than 8% of the ASG budget. Uh, I, do, I can't see the chat, so if you have a question, just please turn your mic on and, and, and do, do say it. <laughs> uh, again, infantile with technology, uh, so I might need a little bit of help here. Um, so about 8% of the uh, annual budget for ASG is about 30000 to about $35,000 a year, uh, and there's a lot of room for growth in here as well. So. Each year, the executive board will sit down and be like, these are the events that our organizations have, uh, and these are our, our multi-organizational events. Um, I'm sure that there's a couple that come to mind for everybody. Um, so these events will be um, already allocated for, and, but that FACC won't be the end-all be-all. There'll still be an opportunity to access the general surplus speaker, all the normal funds that every organization can go to. But for me, um, I would. I don't like the idea that our events that are 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 some of the most beautiful, in my opinion, for culture, uh, come out of the same budgets that um, soccer balls come out of. Um, because, um, and this is something that Avi and I discussed thoroughly, but culture um, and diversity are some of the things. Like the Earth provides a lot for us, but culture and diversity is something that was made by humans, and it's very it's very beautiful. It's a fruit in itself. Uh, it's the fruit of people. Um, so going forward that, uh, Silk will be able to request funding from any independent organiz as any independent organization. Um, but they'll still have to follow basic financial procedures, um, and things along like that. They'll still have, there'll be finance requests and finance meetings, but it's imperative that we look at 6C cultural events will no longer come from annual club budgets. Usually in the past we've allocated it events usually come out of your uh, club's budget, but now all these events, rather than having to come from club budgets, they'll come from the FACC and uh, whenever possible, whenever feasible. Uh, and then the ASG treasurer and executive board, mainly the executive treasurer will work uh, in tandem to properly adequate funding for this. Um, there will be some permanent representation from the Silk Executive Board within the ASG cabinet, which is important here. So there will be a co-director for uh, ASG diversity and inclusion, as well as a co-director for student affairs uh, to work in tandem uh, with our current student affairs director. Uh, the Executive Board will choose uh, those representatives to serve uh, parallel terms to those of ASG. So whenever the ASG president and vice president, they choose their cabinet, uh, the uh, then the Silk president and uh, their executive board will then submit their members to ASG Senate. They'll have to uh, follow the Silk members who are coming to ASG will then have to follow and go through a lot of the ASG procedures. They'll have to be sworn in. 
um, but they'll have uh, more impeachment clauses as they'll have to still follow the honor code, follow the ASG constitution as well as the SOAP constitution. Um, can everyone still see my screen? Thank you, Emma. I appreciate the thumbs up. You're the only person I can see. <laughs> you can do it, Noah. Thank you. Um, so any amendments to this legislation will require the unanimous support um, of the executive board and a unanimous uh, support of the Senate of Silk, but we'll get into that in the Constitution. Um, any amendments that could even potentially, that would go towards ASG, our Constitution, or the, at all, potentially the Constitution of, of Silk, must be sent uh in, in in advance to the the silk executive board as well as all silk club executives which should hopefully be then shared across the bodies of all um all silk members um is that the executive board has also the ability to amend these resolutions before they are voted in the senate so there's a, a kind of a check and balance here uh is that if we um uh, write something that doesn't sound right, they have the ability to write it, send it back, and keep this constant communication to make sure that the legislative pieces that we're pursuing, any amendments, bills, resolutions, such as this one, are acting in the best interest of all students. Um, and then uh, section nine pretty much states that uh, the legislation will take uh, its first initial uh, steps in the fall of 2021. So this coming fall semester, um, will be the start of, of this silk, uh, um, of silk, uh, and as a government, if you will. But this will also, um, if this passes, I would like to see a president, vice president, treasurer, and secretary, uh, permitted and, uh, elected in, uh, so that during the summer, whoever the ASG president may be, has the ability to communicate and kind of discuss some large goals for the year. And this is the Constitution, and I, I want to give special thanks to our composers. Uh, they were incredible. Crystal, you're here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I cannot thank them enough. They work tirelessly with me, uh, and I know that I did a lot of talking, and I know that um, it was hard work, and I really appreciate the work that they did. So um, feel free to read the preamble uh, in another time, but in, to save time, I'd really like to get into the, the good stuff. So these are more or less the things that we've talked about, um, is that Article 1 says the name and purpose. It's, it's, this is the, the name, the purpose, uh, as well as the statement of community, which is recognized within the ASG Constitution. If you've read the ASG Constitution, um, there's a lot of overlap in some of the, the, the outlines, as well as some of the, the clauses. Uh, the scope and powers is that uh, SOAK should be the official voice uh, for community members who are system systemically marginalized at Allegheny College and the administrative unit for all the organizations aligned with SOAK. Um, uh, the membership is pretty much going to be any, to obtain SOAK membership, one must attend 75, uh, roughly that little squiggly line means just about 75% um, of the SOAK organization's regular meetings. Um, and then an organization will be recognized as silk as if they fulfill the purpose outlined in the constitution, as well as provide that their members consist of over 80% uh, systemically uh, marginalized groups. Um, and that their silk, they'll represent, um, organizations will be represented by uh, their membership. Uh, and that the section four is more or less the statement that this body is, inter inter uh, is independent. Um, it, uh, it's it that's a almost a copy and paste right from the ASG constitution, but it's now uh, focused towards more silk, and that the powers uh, of Allegheny College are also within this constitution as well as the constitution of ASG. Uh, there will be a Freedom of Information Act uh, similar to the one that we have, where we have to publish our minutes. They'll publish their minutes as well. Um, silk will be under the advisement of uh, the Idea Center and the Idea Center's directors, which are Mika and um, Angelica. And they are doing, they have looked at this bill extensively and especially this constitution extensively and they played an instrumental role in making sure that what was written would be best beneficial uh, even in the, for the students, even in the, the, the legalese. So there's a, obviously a chief executives, as I was saying earlier, that they'll, um, they'll work with the, uh, they'll meet with the ASG president as well, 
uh, you'll see some um, that the president will meet with the ASG president biweekly, lead executive board meetings, uh, and serve as a liaison, uh, similar to what ASG presidents do to the student body, to ASG, to the administration. The vice president is very much the same. Uh, there's a, an appointment and duties to the executive board. Uh, and what I want to focus on during this section is the executives. So we have a director of the treasury, which is <laughs> kind of self-explanatory. The, that's the person who's going to be dealing with the money, um, similar to the role that I serve in now. Uh, so whoever the ASG treasurer is, is in the SOC, director of the treasury is, they'll work uh, very closely throughout the year to kind of bring forth uh, and bring to fruition a lot of events from a financial aspect. We'll have a secretary as well. And then um, we'll have the co-director of student affairs, um, as well as a co-director of diversity inclusion that will sit on the ASG um, cabinet. And they'll be, uh, they'll serve in the same role and with the same uh, powers and abilities, if you will, as the um, ASG, uh, uh, their uh, co-chair. We'll have a director of the press and communication They'll have, uh, similar to the ones that we have, they'll have two uh, recognized SOAP members, uh, one as a press secretary, just to oversee and, and kind of work with the, uh, the director of press and communication and a social media spokesperson who is to manage the social media of SOAP and kind of help with developing social media. Social media obviously is more or less the newspaper of, uh, of the modern world, if you will. Uh, and it's imperative that our organizations have a, that outlet on the internet to kind of grow their uh, source and grow their their, their um, membership. We'll have a director of social justice as well, who can has the authority to come to ASG and speak on the behalf of Silk, and they can speak on an issue for an unlimited amount of time, um, and, and and address social issues and raise awareness whenever possible, wherever possible. Um, and this was more or less um, when we were discussing the Constitution, the, the tragic deaths uh, that have happened in 2020 and just kind of the crisis that we're in socially. Um, Asian American hate crimes have gone up 1900%. Uh, the FBI reported that uh, overall hate crimes have gone up uh, a pretty scary amount, as well as um, the deaths of George Floyd, for example. Um, so those, uh, this role will be very important in kind of addressing those issues and kind of making ASG one aware of them, as well as kind of saying like this is a problem and this is why it's a problem. And it's a shame that I have to be here and say this, but it, it is and we need to do something. Uh, we'll have a parliamentarian. Uh, this is my favorite part of the bill uh, because it's just a, it's a juicy word to me. I really like the phrase parliamentarian. Um, so the parliamentarian is, is more or less the attorney general of the organization. They'll be well versed in the knowledge of this constitution, the resolution, as well as the financial guidelines of ASG, the constitution and bylaws of ASG, and, and they'll pretty much be the lawyer of, 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 of the silk organizations. Uh, they'll have a director of community relationship, uh, community relations to kind of improve the relations with Allegheny College student government and Silk, as well as kind of improve the relationship with Allegheny College and the greater city of Meadville. Um, there's again some removable clauses similar to that of what uh, we have, uh, and then there's a succession clause. And as you can see here, these are this is the list of succession. Our constitution currently does not have one, but I uh, we it was important to have one. Uh, simply because if any accidents or anyone needs to step down, we need to make sure that those roles can be filled immediately. Um, section 13 goes into that members of the SOAP organization, um, you can't be a club executive and a SOAP board executive at the same time, there's a conflict of interest there, um, as well as someone cannot be an executive board member as on both ASG and SOAP. Um, so, um, you can't be ASG president and SOAP president at the same time. That's just too much at the same time. And, and to make sure that everyone can do their jobs to the highest efficiency, that's, that's more or less kind of the point there. How's everyone doing? Any questions so far? You've done great, Noah. Thanks. All righty. Again, I can't see the chat, so just either wave at me or just start talking, uh, and I will let you uh, make your statement. Uh, club independence and the relationship to Silk is more or less uh, that clubs, they, uh, they report to the, uh, so there's a Senate uh, for Silk. Uh, 
comprised of all the organizations, they'll all get one seat. Um, and as we add more organizations, we'll add more seats. Um, but club presidents for this year will retain the spot in the Senate or they can designate the vice president for the term. Um, uh, and that the Silk president will report to the, the status of how the Silk Senate meetings are going to their organization. That's kind of uh, their responsibility. Um, but it's important that we recognize that all powers outlined in the so, uh, in the club's constitution will stay with that club's executives. And it's the same thing with vice presidents, um, the club treasurers and secretaries. Um, so clubs will have the ability to host events under their name as stated in the uh, resolution. They'll be able to collaborate with any organization, still receive ideas funding. They'll still have the, they'll still retain their annual budget and it'll be the executive, the club executive's responsibility to uh, go through that process. Uh, but at this point, they'll have not one, but two people who should be well versed in the, the procedures of the financing. So uh, during that period of time, both the Silk uh, Treasurer and the, um, the ASG Treasurer will, will be able to assist in that process. Um, again, you see here that each, uh, that there'll be one Senate seat for each organization. And now we'll get into the fun stuff of what the Silk Senate is. Uh, we have the legislative power. So um, the legislative power will be vested in Silk, uh, the Senate of Silk, as there'll be one senator from each organization recognized by Silk by the membership stated above. Uh, should any future organization be recognized that they shall also receive a Senate because that's kind of the, the beauty of the legislative process. Um, senators will hold the office for one term and it will be um, uh, recognized as one academic period simply because club executives shift and there's multiple times where they have elections within organizations. So also to kind of just ease the mental health aspect of it, rather than having to serve for a full one year that they'll be, they'll have the ability to serve a full year, but it will be broken up into two terms. Um, if the seats are vacant, uh, the SOAP organization will have the ability to um, nominate a new senator to fill that uh, as a proxy for the remainder of their term. Um, there will be an oath that will be further decided by the SOAP organization. Um, that will be very similar to the senators, the one you swore in when you were like, I will do my duties as a senator to ASG. Um, here are kind of the duties that are outlined um, for the senators. And uh, you can feel free to read this. I do encourage that uh, senators, you go back, cabinet members, you go back and you, you look through the legislation as well as, please do correct my grammar. Uh, if you do find a mistake, uh, it was never my strong suit, but I'm hoping to uh, get better every day. Uh, and then this is an important aspect of Section 3 is that um, we're going to be composed, that SOAP will have the ability to compose legislation. Um, and the executive board and the parliamentarian will play in a very, very active role in that decision. But overall, uh, SOAP will have an ability to modify the actions and responsibilities of the ASG government. The legislation must be, but like, for example, if uh, SOAP, uh, in the ASG, we're trying to do something that would alter both organizations. It would be a bi-organizational bill, similar to this one. This has taken ASG executives as well as SOAP members and executives of their organizations kind of sitting down together to kind of create this. Uh, and it will be a very similar process to that if more amendments are added. Uh, prior to unveiling the legislation in either the Senate our Senate or the Silk Senate, uh, the president and vice president of both organizations must be aware of the uh, the piece at least two weeks prior to uh, it breaching the floor of both Senates. And that will also give the president time to sit down and say, this has come up to me. This is a legislative piece that I've heard. I'm giving it to you. I want you to read it and I want to discuss it uh, at our meeting. Uh, and this will again help facilitate those conversations on kind of the greater prosperity of how, how this all should function. Any amendments drafted uh, to this constitution, the one that we're looking at now, must may only be drafted and approved by the SOAP members. So ASG, we will not have an ability to amend or remove this piece of uh, legislation. It will be uh, in the hands of the SOAP organizations. Similar to what we do, it will be a two-thirds majority to change it. There will be a veto option, is that the SOAP holds the ability to veto any ASG resolution with the unanimous support of the executive board and supermajority of the Senate. And that's simply because uh, if ASG, let's say 
50 years down the road is like, we're going to get rid of this. We don't need it. Um, they'll have the ability to say, no, that's wrong. Uh, this needs to function uh, and it has an important purpose. Uh, that SOC also may be able to send any amendments to this resolution or this constitution uh, and it'll, uh, to any cabinet members uh, or senators who are writing the bill. So if we uh, ever were to draft more legislation uh, as uh, an executive body and legislative body do, that they'll have an ability to amend us um, and say, these are things that we don't like. Um, can you please explain your reasoning for doing this specific thing? Uh, this item's uh, concerning to us. Um, uh, the purpose, uh, oh, here we go with financial policies. Uh, this is kind of where we break down and talk a little bit about the FACC, but I kind of hashed that out uh, in the prior, during the ASG resolution. Again, we have club budgets that will retain it. Um, there's a statement of financial disclosure, which is also in the resolution. Um, and then we have our relation uh, to SOC, ASG's relation that is. Uh, and this is to work in order for the greater prosperity of the Allegheny College community, Powers both reside in SILK and ASG. While the powers and responsibilities are divided between bodies, they must work in tandem to create a progressive future. Ultimately, it's the responsibility of both organizations to work together to benefit all students. Again, they have the ability to veto uh, potential constitutional amendments for either um, SILK or ASG organizations that, that will oversee all SILK organizations. Uh, that they'll remain independent as a legislative body apart from ASG, but while still working in tandem. Uh, and that the SOAP will have the responsibility to plan and execute all meetings and events, including but not limited to uh, all multicultural events. And I'm sure that there's a plethora of that come to your mind. Uh, if not, when they start happening again, hopefully next year, you should definitely be attending them, uh, not only as senators, but as students. There's powers that reside in ASG, such as the funding. Uh, we will be the ones who be providing the funding uh, from the various fund. And, and whenever we have whenever we have the opportunity, we will assist when necessary uh, to with the withdrawals of monies from the FACC. Uh, again, any amendments to the ASG constitution must be uh, voted upon as we are hoping to do with uh, this next week. Uh, passing with the uh, necessary requirements in, in both constitutions. There will be mandatory meetings. Uh, again, ASG Cabinet Executive Board will have a monthly meeting to talk about goals, projects, and a continued advancement and celebration of culture and diversity on our campus. I know we're getting uh, kind of uh, late into the night, so I will continue. Uh, we are almost done, I pinky promise. Uh, and then it's the same thing with the code of conduct. Uh, or any uh, document that applies to all students. Both ASG Senate and SOAP Senate will have the opportunity to share uh, their opinions on it and amend as they see fit. Amendments, uh, any amendments to this constitution will again be approved by SOAP Senate by a supermajority. And this is the same thing as I was stating before with the ASG Senate. Bylaws, uh, we have a bylaws uh, statement within our constitution. It's pages, I believe, 17 through 25. Um, uh, and that's kind of like, they'll follow the same rules of Robert's rule of order as us. These are pretty much taken right from the ASG constitution because they're structure function things. So uh, kind of the modes of voting, we'll have general cons uh, consent, voice, roll count vote. That's what we'll be doing. Uh, when we have the vote on this legislative piece next week, we will have a roll call vote. Uh, ballots, again, quorum, uh, just a basic uh, structure function thing. Attendance, same thing, it's a structure function thing. Um, that senators, if they miss a meeting, they'll just appoint a proxy member from their specific organization. Elections, um, to practice, <laughs> to preserve in the integrity of the democratic practices in SILK and uh, stronger unity within the SILK organizations, there shall be an election for the SILK president, vice presidents, and the executive boards. Uh, so in comparison to the way that ASG does it, the ASG president and vice president are elected and then they choose the cabinet, but in a different manner, the, the all members of the executive board will be voted upon, which is uh, imperative, because then everyone has the ability to enact and, and play an active role in democracy. Qualifications, as that they must have served on the club, so uh, the SOAP club executive boards, um, 
Um, there's a period of elections. Again, it'll be two months prior to the ASG election. So our election cycle starts in January, I believe. Emma, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Just about in January is when our election cycle starts um, with campaigning, opening, and, and things along, give or take. Uh, they'll have their elections two months prior to that, just to make sure that people have the ability that if they don't get an executive spot within so they still have the ability to kind of engage in uh, the democratic process for the whole student body. There's uh, obviously some uh, qualifications for voting. Uh, we talked about membership, it's defined in the previous articles as stated uh, earlier. There's a special election committee and there'll be a, a section for uh, election policies and procedures. If this uh, legislative piece goes through, we'll continue that and that'll be a conversation that we hopefully have in the coming months. So during that elections, the ASG just, uh, ASG Attorney General, the so parliamentarian will assume these special roles and other election uh, related duties. The parliamentarian will have a special election committee, the SEC, and then not a, the special election committee, and there'll be a secretaries of silk voting similar to the ones that we have here. And work in tandem with the ASG uh, Attorney General on election um, related matters, and this committee will only exist during the actual period of elections kind of making sure that everyone's following a very ethical guideline uh, for how uh, elections should go. Um, similar to the one that we have. Uh, there's a, obviously some election, pre-election obligations. Um, again, similar to the ones that we have. There's an infraction period. period. Uh, this is also things from the ASD constitution that are just more or less structured functional things to keep kind of justice and due process within both organizations. Uh, you shouldn't bribe people, uh, you shouldn't use negative campaigning, and you, you definitely should not be threatening people. Um, and then there will be a similar to reporting election infractions, uh, and then there will be uh, an SEC will uh, kind of go rules committee uh, in the SEC within the parliamentarian's office will kind of go over um, um, the infractions if they do come up. Let's hope that they don't. Let's, everyone runs a very ethical campaign, but if it does happen, we do need to keep a check and balance on that process. Uh, and then there are consequences. If one is found guilty of an infraction policy, uh, consequences may be, but are not limited to uh, removal from the ballot. So that was a lot. A lot of writing, a lot of pages. Um, I'm gonna stop the screen. How do I? Okay, thank goodness I figured it out. First try. That was the piece. So I know it's a lot, and I definitely talked a lot there, about 40 minutes straight. Um, so an applause is not necessary, but I do appreciate it. But this is something that should have been done, in my opinion, years ago, and it's a I'm glad to be partaking in it now, but <laughs> if there's anything or any questions, please do not hesitate um, to uh, ask now. I, I'd be more than happy to answer will willingly every and all questions to why and how this needs to function. But without further ado, uh, I've concluded my little presentation. Um, so uh, the next steps for me in this bill our, um, I'm, we have a silk meeting on Thursday, and Abby and I will be going to that. I'll kind of just discussing uh, with the silk members the process of getting this on the floor of the Senate. I'd like to have two roll call votes, which are necessary, and I want them to be roll call votes because I think, Senators, it's imperative that um, your vote is counted and, um, as, um, and that, um, uh, that the, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I just had like a little brain fart there, excuse me. Um, that um, uh, the 16th and the 23rd, I believe those are the dates. Those are when I wanna have, the, oh, today's the 16th, excuse me. The 23rd and the 30th, those are the dates that I would like to have voting on this unless uh, there needs to be further discussion in the Senate about this. So does anyone have any questions? Um, Willie? Uh, this goes back to something you said earlier. I just want a clarification on it. When you mean um, academic period, are you talking semesters or full academic years? It's an academic semester, so it'll be the fall semester and the spring semester, but I was talking about the terms of the senators. Uh, there'll only be one academic semester, but 
If you come in the fall, you can serve for two consecutive uh, sessions, similar to the way that we do it with our senators. Uh, I just wanted to break it up because I know that organizations, some of them have their elections for their executive board in the fall, um, like December, and then some of them have them in April uh, for the spring semester. And that's kind of how the way that they work. But just to make sure that every organization doesn't have to already doesn't have to really uh, mess up the, the way that the organization is thriving. I wanted to offer half year um, terms. Does that answer your question, Willie? Yes, thank you. I was just confused by some of the wording. Yeah, it's in, it's in this uh, tricky legalese. <laughs> uh, anybody else have any questions? Um, if you don't want to ask them here, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Uh, or Abdi, and we'd be happy to answer um, them uh, further as well. All you. Yeah, it was wonderfully thought out. And every time I thought I had a question, it would be covered in the next section. So thank you so much for doing this. My pleasure. Um, it wouldn't be without the the silk members who 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 gave up so much time to work with me. Uh, I think a lot of that things also goes to, to Crystal, who uh, worked so closely with us as well, and Abdi. Uh, but thank you. Anybody else? But if not, that's that's all I have, and and then I'd hope to uh, vote next week, starting next week. Sound good? Beautiful. Thank you so much for listening to me. I know that was a long talk. Uh, so thank you. All righty. Thank you, Noah. Um, like he mentioned, we will be voting next week. So just go back to that email to refresh your mind and whatnot. But with, um, what's next? Oh, is there any constituent comments? If there is, you can put an asterisk on the chat box. Camila, any advisor announcements? Hi, everyone. I'll keep it very brief. Um, congratulations, everyone, on running a clean election. I know this has been very difficult. Um, so very proud of you. Looking forward to hearing um, the final results tomorrow. Thank you, Noah, for that extremely detailed <laughs> and thought out report um, on the Silk legislation. I'm looking forward to having you guys vote on that next week as well. So thanks so much for being here and have a great night, everyone. Hey, thank you. Is there a motion to close this meeting? Motion to close this meeting. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? I'm in favor. I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> that passes. Peace out, y'all. Have a good night.